again, we're going to work on the trunk of the tree and then we're actually going to be adding the branches. And when we finish off the tree, we're going to be doing the roots. Now you guys see the tree going up forward, standing in its upright position. When we actually lay this on the loom, we're going to lay out single bands and horizontals following my steps. We're going to do a technique called the move it forward, which Kate from Azilicious Designs came up with. And that's the technique I've used to create the trunk of the tree. But actually when we do this, the tree is going to be turned upside down. So we're going to be adding our branches on the bottom and using them as cat bands. So as you're looking at this when we loom it, we're looming our branches at the bottom. And these pieces here that you see are actually going to be how I finish off the top. That's going to be like our root system. Let's begin with our loom set in a straight configuration. We want just all three pegs lined up together. I'm going to show you how to remove the base first and line up so that we can do the move it forward technique. I want you just to take your hook, pop it underneath, and remove that center piece, the large center piece. Then I want you to just do one, two, three, your third row. I want you to pop it on back onto that base again. So we, here we have three rows lined up, one, two, three, and then we have two open spaces on our base. And when we do the move it forward, we're going to be moving forward two rows at a time. I want to let you know that we're going to switch horizontal bands throughout this also. And I've got a little note here to remind myself we're doing row number two, five, and number eight for our horizontal bands. So we'll get through that as we go along. That might have confused a little bit of you, a few of you, but you'll get it as we go along. The first thing we need to do is to lay single bands, one band, all the way down our loom. We need just to do a single chain all the way down. And you're going to fill up your whole entire loom with the single chain. Just one band completely down. And you want to fill up the entire loom. And this is the part where we need the elevator music because this part's kind of boring. And my apologies, we're gonna start on row number two. And we're doing just a single band. This is a little different. If anybody's made Ursula, in Ursula I use two bands. Um, I kind of discovered with the tree, since I'm doing the, the trunk, I'm using a different support system that I only needed to use one band. So we're just doing one band completely down the loom. Elevator music. I did not make it in a singing career, so I had to become a comedian. <laughs> Still single bands. As you can see, I'm not the comedian either. I am a, because I'm a teacher now, I'm a tutorialist. Here we go. And the last single band on our loom. We're going to come back up here to the top and we are going to begin to lay our cap bands for this area, our horizontal bands, horizontal bands. And to do this, this is where C clips or C or S clips are going to come into play. I use the S clips because I've got fat fingers, so I find it a little bit more space and easier to use these, but you can use C clips. You want to take a single band, secure it on your clip, and then you want to run this band across peg two down, but only two pegs across. And we're going to do this all the way down our loom until we get to the last peg where we won't need them. So you're just doing your C-clip horizontal band across two pegs. And when we finish off, 
this product when we finish off the trunk. I'm going to do something kind of odd, but the, the C or S clips make it really easy to do. And just wait till we get to that portion. So I'm just going to lay my horizontal bands all the way down the loom. And I really don't need my instruction sheets because this is pretty, pretty simple-ish until I forget about a horizontal band. And I need one more S-clip. There we go. So we've got our horizontal bands laid all the way down the loom. Now we want to come back up here to the top again and we want to lay horizontal bands from the center peg over to the right peg. One band over to the right. And just your horizontal band. One band over to the right. There we have finished laying our horizontal bands. So next I want you to take your tree creation, your branches, the upper portion, the one, two, three, four, five pieces that you made. And I am just reclaiming this first one on my normal hook that I'm using. You want to make sure that the kind of circly portion where we did those three twist bands is facing up. You want that part facing up and you want the chain link portion looking down. I'm going to take this and we're going to place this on the center peg. And that is going to sort of form our cat band. And you'll see I have these two that are still open and available. I want you to take two bands Pull back that cat band slightly and put your hook in it. I want you to grab those two bands that you just gathered in your one hand. I want you to pull it up through that cat band, reclaim it on your hook, and then we're going to place it on our left peg. We're going to do the same procedure for the right side two bands and you'll have to forgive me I need to turn my loom because I just can't work that way put it within the cat band grab it oops grab those two and you might fumble with it until we get this this technique down and put that on our right peg so this is what your bottom should look like at the current moment. You have your branch, the center one that we started with, and then we just added two bands on each side. Now we need to loom forward, but as we loom forward, it's going to be straightforward looping. We're only going to do rows one and two. We're going to leave row three alone. So let's reach into our leftmost peg, which is row one, and we're just going to loop straight forward. And you want your little S hooks or C clips to kind of stay off to the left side. And we're just going to continue to loop forward. Straight, easy looping of the single band going forward. I always said I wasn't going to sing, didn't I? And forward again. And last one, forward. Okay, and we're going to start off down here at the bottom again, which is row number two. And we're going to reach in beyond that cat band. And we'll come forward, push back your two horizontal bands. Push back your two horizontal bands back the two horizontal, grab the one on the bottom. I'm trying to go too fast and I'm missing my bottom hook, my bottom loop. And we're looping forward. 
I like to say looming, but I guess we're actually looping forward. And you want to continue on to the very top. Okay, and we have reached the very top. And for the top, we're going to take row number one, the leftmost row, and move it over to row number two. At what is row number two now, the center peg, you're going to take three bands, three rubber bands, and you're going to place your hook through the center, place your hook through the peg, kind of like you would be tying it off, but you're going to pull these three bands up and you're going to reclaim it on your hook. Then we need to take two bands, pull that through, and reclaim that on our hook. We need to take another two bands, pull that through, and reclaim that on our hook. And we need to finish this part off with a single band pulled through, reclaim on your hook, slide your loop that's closest to you over, and make a slip knot. And that is going to finish off our rows one and two. Now that rows one and two are finished off, we're going to unhook them from the pegs and we're going to move row one over to two, just the plastic part, and the other plastic portion over here. So to do this, you wanna take your hook or your, your hook or your skewer and you just wanna undo the pegs on row one and two. You want row three to stay where it is because we still have work to do on row three with that horizontal band. So we're just undoing, unraveling rows one and two. And be careful that your horizontals don't fall off of um, row number three. And as I said, I like to use my hook or back of a skewer. If you don't use the same kind of hook I do, um, I just found when I use the the actual hook portion, they'd get called in there a little bit. Down here at the bottom, take off row one, take off row two, and carefully pull that down and sort of tuck it on the inside. You see one of my horizontal bands popped up, but that's okay, I'll just push it back down. Now we need to physically take this first one off And we're going to move it over, keeping it in line. And that is now going to become row number three. And what was row number two, it's plastic. And I'm caught at the bottom here. There we go. It's plastic is going to get moved over and create number five. You want to just push that back down and make sure everything's nice and secure. So here we've got three more sets of rows. So let's begin by loading those up with single bands. Single, single, single. And I know this part is not the difficult part, loading up the loom with your single bands. So if I seem like I'm going too fast, um, it's just because it's kind of boring. <laughs> Come back up to your empty row and do a single band. Loading up your loom with the single bands. Oops. And last one, single band. Okay. Now we need to come up to the top again. And here we have got the horizontal. If you if you kind of pull it up a little bit, 
and keep it in line with where you pulled up. You'll see that the horizontal is laid across what was row number three. You want to take that horizontal and you want to stretch it all the way across the next two pegs. And you want to do this for each horizontal that we have here. So you're picking up that horizontal and just stretching it across. And as I said, if I'm going too fast for anybody, just hit the pause button and catch up. We're just stretching across that horizontal. And there is that one. When you get towards the end and the beginning, the beginning and the end, it might be a little difficult to find your horizontals, but they're kind of the loose and baggy ones at the current moment. Okay, so now that we have got the horizontals laid across, we also have got to lay our next branch portion. So find your branches, your outside branches, not your big center one. Find your outside branches, reclaim that on your regular hook. You'll want to make sure that the little circly portions are facing up and the linked portion is facing down. Put that on your center peg. And much like the first one that we did, we're going to grab two bands, pull that cap band back, pull those two bands through, and I missed that pull, so I'm going to do that again. Pull my cap band back. You might need to hold on to your cap band a little bit. Pull that through and reclaim those two on your hook and place those off to the left. We need to do the same thing for the right side. Two bands again. Once again, I have to turn because I can't do it that way. Pull back your cap band. Place your hook in. Two bands on. Oops. Two bands on. And now it has fallen off of my center peg. I know this part's a little difficult. If I'm struggling with it, I know that you are, but it just makes the tree work out well. Reclaim and place that on your right peg. Okay. And now that we have our branches added, we can loom, loop up row number three. If you ever get confused as to how many rows, just look at how many um, links you have over here. There's one link and two link, and now we're working on row three. So for row three, reach in beyond all those bands, and you want the bottom one. Oop. <laughs> And my hook just shot halfway across the room. Reach in, all those bands, and I want the bottom one, and I'm going to loom forward. And then easy one, horizontal, loom forward. If you ever get kind of confused, just pull back those other ones a little bit. Horizontal forward. This is just regular grab one band and loop it forward. Pushing back your horizontal band. And continuing on. And finish off row number three. That was row number three that we just did. We need to come back down here and start row number four. Reach in to that cap band, and we're just going to loom row four straight forward. And it doesn't matter if it falls off back here. We're going to be taking it off in just a second or two anyway. Okay, and we're almost done with row four. Four. Okay, row four is now done. You need to take the top of row three and move it over to the hook 
of row four, the peg of row four. We need to grab three bands, reach in and slip knot sort of those over, reclaim the end three. And that has just fallen off the loom, which is okay, but I'd rather it stay on there for a second. And we have two bands pulling through, two bands pulling through, and we're going to slip knot it off with pulling through one band and slip knot that off. Now we're ready to take row number three and row number four off and we're going to leave row number five. So we just want to unhook row four and we want to unhook row number three, leaving row number five there. And if you want to pull off just one row at a time, you can do that. Might make it easier for some of you. Down here at the bottom, be careful. So there was row number three, and I'm releasing row number four. And I'm just basically just pulling the bands over um, the peg. We want row number five to stay where it is. We want those hor horizontal bands to stay in place. And if you get one band caught, like I've got a band caught right here, just unhook it and fold it in. And here I have a whole nother set of row number four caught and tuck those in. And now we're going to create row number six and seven, but I have no pegs here for six and seven. So I need to take my two small pieces, move it over. I need to take my two small pieces off the bottom and move it over. So now I have got a space to put these two pegs. So I take off that set of pegs and move it over. take off this set of pegs and move it over and push down on that and here we have got another set of three pegs and can anyone guess what we need to do again single band single band single band we're just going to load this guy back up with our single bands. And I promised I wasn't gonna sing. You really don't want me to. <laughs> and let's come back up here again with a single band. And as I said, if I'm going too fast, hit the pause button, rewind. If I'm not talking loud enough for you, turn your volume up on your computer. Um, different devices work differently, so I try to do what's best for what I think I'm talking loud enough. If I'm not talking loud enough, hit the volume button. Going too fast, hit the pause button. Okay. So these two pegs are filled up with their single bands. And I know just from experience, this is row number five, and I know I need to add a horizontal band. So we're gonna come across row number five, six, and seven with a horizontal band at the top. And just push that down a little bit. I'm gonna push these down some. Come across with your horizontal band. Shot that one across the room too. Don't you just love it when you do that? And this is just pretty simple, just laying across the horizontal band. If you've ever made a triple single chain, that's kind of sort of what we're doing. Okay, now back to the bottom, the part that we don't like. 
I don't like this part. I'm not going to lie. I don't like this part, but it makes the tree look really good. Let's reclaim our branch. And we can take this and place it on the center peg. Need two bands. And we're going to pull back that center band and we're going to bring those two brown bands up through there. Reclaim it on our hook and take it off to the left. I might have said right in the previous one. Sometimes I get my left and right confused. You know, I need to come back over. I gotta switch my loom because I just can't do it with two hands that way. Reach in to the cat band area. Pull those two bands up through. Reclaim them on your hook. And place it off to the right. Now we're ready to begin to loom row number five and row number six. I'm just pulling back all those bands to find my cat band. Not my cat band, my single band that's way down there. And now we just need to straight forward single chain loop up. And we're going to continue to loop up. I know you guys are going to be like, oh, real time, fast forward. When you get to row number 10, if you've already got this pattern figured out and you want to move faster than me, um, when you get to row number 10, you want to stop because I'm going to show you something different at row number 10. You're going to be like, oh, okay. And if you've made Ursula, you're going to know what to do. So I'm finished with row number five. I'm reaching back into row number six. I'm just going to come straight forward, or number six, and straight forward, loop, 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 that's annoying, I know, but really guys, some people are like, don't fast forward through things, so I'm trying to do it all in real time, I'm trying to be a good girl. Trying to please my viewers. Okay, now that row number five is done and row number six is done, we need to take five's top band and move it over to six. We need to take three bands, one, two, three bands, and we're going to finish this off at the top here. Pulling those three bands through and I can't get a hold of them at the moment. Pull those three bands through and reclaim them on your hook. And we need to do two bands through and reclaim that on your hook. Two more bands through, reclaim those on your hook and one band through and we're gonna slip knot that off. And that's our securing band. Ah. There we go. That's our securing band. Now we need to take row number five and six off. And we're going to move it forward. So I'm just taking five off. Just one there. When you get down to the bottom, remember to gently take that off. And I'm going to take number six off since I'm right here at the bottom and work my way up. You want row number seven to stay. And you want to try to keep those horizontal bands down. is now off. Oops. And you'll see I've got one caught way back here on five. That's okay. Hopefully it won't break. There we go. <clears throat> and down here I've got one caught on row number six. And we want to take the three piece off here. I'm going to move that over 
and secure it on that row, pushing it down. And then we need to unhook and move forward. Be sure to line it up with the previous row. Unhook. And if you need to use the back of your, your hook to get it out, go ahead and do that. Um, sometimes it's just really, really tight. And we're going to move that forward. So you just make sure your horizontal bands are down. And just because I know the next step is coming, I've already unhooked these, I'm just going to line them up again for the next two that are coming because we got a little bit more work to do. You guys will see that my horizontal bands popped up here some, and that's okay. Just take them and push them back down for a second. And now we need to continue to lay single bands again, single single, single, and I'm going to let you guys know a little spoiler alert. I'm making a hammock that we can place between two trees, and I'm also making a little, a couple little figurines to go along with this garden series. We can have dad or mom chillaxing in the hammock between our two trees, or you can make yourself chillax in between the two trees. So look forward to the hammock tutorial coming very soon. And now we're just loading up with single bands again. That one was slightly twisted. Single, single. I know the video is really long guys, I'm sorry, but most of you probably got this technique down by now and are zipping right through it. If not, I'm here to teach you how to do this. And as said before, pause, rewind, pause, rewind, volume. Okay, so those are loaded and we need to take and move our horizontal band all the way across. So we're going to take this horizontal band and move it across to that last peg, which is row number, this is row number six, seven, and eight. And we're just taking those horizontals and stretching them across. And that horizontal belongs right there. And this one belongs there. There's one. And there's one. And as I said at the beginning and at the end of the loom, the horizontals get a little tricky. There is one. And down here at the bottom, we don't need horizontals because guess what? My favorite part. We have to add branches again. So let's add our branch to our center peg. And we're going to take two bands and we need to pull back the cat band, find our two bands and pull that through the cat band and reclaim it back on our hook and put that on the left peg. I'm turning my loom again so I can reach the other side. Two bands, pulling back that cat band and I struggle with this side because it's an awkward movement for me. And we're going to place that on the right side. And we only have to do that one more time, guys. Yay! <laughs> and how I can tell is because I got one more set of branches left. Okay, now we're going to straightforward loom this row and this row and leave this one. 
reach in, find your single band, and come forward. Forward. And that one's a little messy looking because of the horizontals, but you want to push back and just make sure that you're grabbing the single band. There we go, single band. You want your single band on the very bottom. Still looping, looping, loop, or looping at this point. And come forward. We're going to come back down here to the center. And basic, straightforward looping. I would say a knock knock joke, but I don't know any of those too well either. And just keep coming forward. It's really nice when I create because I can have music play, but during taping, you're not allowed to have music play because music is copywritten. And you're not allowed to have anything play in the background. So that's why it's so quiet. Okay, so our center bag is completely looped. Take your leftmost and move it over to the center. And we're going to take three bands and we're going to finish off this end by pulling our three bands through, reclaim on our hook, two bands through, reclaim that on our hook, two bands through, reclaim that on our hook, and one band through, and we're going to slip knot that one off. And I lost my slip knot again. There we go. Slip knot that off. And you guessed it. One more move over. So let's unhook that top one and unhook these guys. get to the bottom and we want to make sure we slide our hook in there and we're going to unhook those two and now I'm unhooking the center row leaving our third most our right most row and trying to keep our horizontal bands down on that last row okay and this is going to be our last move over so we want to take that peg and move it over here, push it down, take this open peg, flip your creation back over and move that there and push down. Okay, now we're on our last set. Woohoo! So we're doing singles all the way down and I'm going to move faster just because we should definitely have the whole lane of a single band on the loom straight by now. Just keep looping, keep looping. This isn't looping, this is the lane portion. And come back up. This is going to be our last set of rows that we have to lay out. Okay, and our last branch piece that you want to make sure once again that your um, little circle parts are facing up. And the link portion's facing down. And we're going to place that on the center. Comes the part I don't like. Reach out your cat band, pull it back. You want to pull those two through. It's really hard to do this on camera. And reclaim those two. And put that off to the left peg. I'm going to turn. Reclaim those two. And I 
can't seem to grab those. So we'll reclaim those two and place it on our right peg. Okay. And for this last set, we are going to be placing a horizontal band, just like you would a single chain or triple single. So place that horizontal band all the way across. And this is holding our whole thing together. And we're almost done, guys. Almost done this part, the trunk part. So let's reach into our leftmost peg at the bottom. And we're going to loop forward. You want to grab your bottom band and straightforward loop and continue to loop. Kate is a genius. His delicious designs for coming up with this. It gives a lot more design freedom for me. Um, and as I said, check out her channel. She's great. Okay, and we're going to do our center one, reaching back in, and we're going to come forward, and keep coming forward, and Almost to the end of this row. <laughs> I'm struggling with my straight chain today. Okay, we're going to take our leftmost and move it over to the center. And we're going to finish this off with three bands. Two bands. Two bands and a slip knot and secure off that last one. Okay, now we're going to take our rows off and then we're going to do something different on this very last row. You want to keep your horizontal bands on your peg. Just start taking off, and we want that one to come off also. We want to leave our last peg on just like we have previously. And up here, my horizontal wanted to flip out the wrong way, so. What we're going to be doing next is we're not going to be adding the extra pegs. We're going to actually be taking everything off the pegs, except for this last row. So you want this first set of pegs unhooked and just set that aside. You don't need that anymore. And you want to take your second set off and I'm struggle. I struggle to get that out every time. Sorry, guys. Can't get that one out. Oh, that's because I still got bands up there. <laughs> Might not come off that way. So easy. So, and we're finished with those. We want to just kind of set those pegs aside. So you actually have got just one peg lined up and filled up. This is going to be tricky and a little weird for some of you. I want you to take your area where your S clips are and we're going to be letting it dangle down, which for most of you it should already be dangling down. And we're going to turn it so we can see our S clips. And we're going to take our S clip, which is our horizontal band, and we're going to line it up from the second peg 
you want to grab that S clip, that first S clip, and you just want to tug on it and you want to set it across your first peg, or I'm sorry, the second peg, that second peg at the beginning. So here's a view if it's looking straight on. Here's my second S clip and I'm going to loop it over. This is pulling the horizontal bands around and connecting the whole thing. Next S clip, next S clip. I told you those S clips would come in handy. S clip, okay. And here this horizontal has popped up just a little bit. Just place it back down and grab your S clip. Next S clip. Next S clip. So on and so on until we hit the next to the last band or peg. Now that we have that done, we've got our tree over here and it's all set. We're all connected. We actually need to reach into the bottom peg and we're going to loop forward that single band. So reach in I'm going to loop forward. Reach into those two horizontals, grab your bottom, and come forward. Reach in through the horizontals, grab your bottom. You want to make sure that you're grabbing the bottom one, and come forward. Reach into the bottom. You're grabbing that single chain. If your S clips are in the way, you can just move them out of the way or take them off as you loop up. We can do that. Let's go back and let's just take them off because that'll make it easier. Just disregard your S clip after, or your C clip after you've looped that band forward. Now, <laughs> okay, so here I've just looped that band forward and I'm going to unhook that S clip. Reach in, loop forward. Release your clip. Reach in, loop forward, and release your clip. Reach in, loop forward, release your clip. Reach in, whoop, guys, I almost missed a, a loop. That would be bad, bad. Come back here. Make sure you do not miss a loop. Loop forward and you'd remove your S clip. Mine just fell off right then. Reach in, loop forward, and release your clip. Reach in, loop forward, and this is our last horizontal clip. Let it go and finish off that one there. And here we have got our completed tree trunk and base. With this last one, we just want to secure it off with a simple slip knot. And now we need to take everything off the loom. So this is the way that yours should look. Just double check before we go to take it off that you have looped every one of this last row. And to take it off, I want you to unhook your base. You should still have a base attached. So just unhook that base. And I want you to take and work from the bottom and come up with it. And it's going to form a tube around your peg. So as we're coming forward, we want to make sure that we don't have anything caught underneath. You just want to keep reaching in and pulling forward. And just keep reaching in and pulling forward. 
It might be easier for some of you to stick your finger in there. It might be easier for some of you to reach in with your hook. Like that peg, I didn't get all of them, and you now it's kind of junky looking underneath. So once you get closer to the end, it might be easier just to unhook your top and start to unhook your bot unhook your top a little bit and then we'll be able to unhook everything and just pull out our creation. You kind of need to work it up and out. But this is the way to make the tree be seamless and round and all connected together and in its 3D shape. And we just want to keep pulling until we get out that peg. And here we have got our tree, just our trunk. Tug on it a little bit just to even up the band some. A little tug and pull. And then we are going to set up our next step, which will be the support and connecting the wires so that it doesn't but I'm going to pause here for just a moment and we'll get that portion set up and ready to go for you. Okay guys, I have just realized that I went too far. We actually did 11 rows and that's going to be okay. We can fix this problem and I, I apologize. I started off by saying we would do 10. I actually did 11 in the video. So here you will see that I have got kind of a shorter little root system. This was that last one that we stitched together. And it's okay, it's not gonna matter what the way our tree looks. We're just going to add an extra um, little piece of a root to it. So our first step is going to be to place our hook back through where that single band is. And you want to take off your slip knot there on the end. So unhook that slip knot. And you still have two bands on your loom. We're going to add another little bit of our root system, which was our three, then two, and two again, and the one slip knot, and finish that off. We need to hide our slip knot ends, but we'll do that after we get everything done and complete. So here is the bottom of our tree, which was actually the top portion of our loom. What I want you to do next is to take your paper towel roll, and since everybody's bands are different, yours might not be as stretchy as mine, we need to measure, and it's not an exact science, our, our roll here. So take the top of your tree to the base of your tree and just kind of lay your paper towel roll there. And we want to just roughly cut right through the paper towel roll. Take your scissors and cut right through that paper towel roll. So it's about the same height. It doesn't have to be exact. If you want to trim it a little shorter, shorter is probably better, but it's okay. And next step is going to be to cut through the paper towel roll. And we're going to re-roll the paper towel roll into a smaller circle. So I am just re-rolling the paper towel roll to make it smaller. And then if you have a piece of tape, you can tape off that to make it easier during insertion. But once you get it up in the tree, you, you don't really want the tape on there as you get it up in the tree because you want it to kind of pop open and help secure the trunk of the tree. So we're gonna insert it from the bottom of our tree and just insert that paper towel roll up. And let go of your paper towel roll and it's gonna kind of spring back. And it's gonna spring back to form a larger shape and fill out the base of your tree. So you just want to kind of stretch things a little bit out around the paper towel roll. And here we still have 
our trunk at the bottom. We're going to spread out our legs, our paper towel roll popping through the top here. And that's okay because the next step we're going to do, we are not going to um, see that paper towel tube. So for the next step, you want to take a piece of your wire and you want to run it on the circle portion of your item and you want to run it just through those three or in some cases it'll be two bands and you want to just run it right through the outside of that and then you get to your trunk area and you want to just continue to push down that wire and you just want to push it all the way down through it's right here right now you just want to keep pushing all the way through until it pops out of the bottom and you want to give it a little stretch you want to stretch out those bands on that wire and adjust it to whichever height you think you might want your tree and once we get that one poked through we're going to take our wire cutters and we're going to cut the end of the wire So take your wire cutters and just cut your end of the wire. I'm using little jewelry cutters and struggling there for a moment. We need to move on to the next branch and we're going to do the same thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Take and just run your wire right down that um, set of three bands, that curly type of band that we did. And then once you reach the trunk area, just run it down on the inside of the trunk, trying to pick up a band or two along the way. You can pick up your horizontal bands. Um, but just keep pushing right down. And you need to do this uh, five times because we should have five tops to our tree here. Once again, not an exact science. All trees are not the same height. Flip off your wire end. I don't want my wire to go shoot across the room. That was number two. Now we're doing number three. Pretty simple, straightforward. Just run the wire down your curly bands. And run that through the inside. Picking up a couple bands along the way. And paper towel tubes more for support for this area. Stretch it out some. Clip off your wire. Yes, that one made it all the way across the room. <laughs> Didn't hold on to it, so it is way across the room. Okay, another piece of wire. <laughs> I crack myself up sometimes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Number four branch. Run it through your outside. I know, boring part, fast forward. You guys got the hang of this part by now. Fast forward. But I promised I'd show you guys the whole videos. There we go. And I'm sticking it inside. I'm just going to pick up a couple bands along the way as I push it down and poke it out the bottom a little bit, stretch it out some, cut holding on to the other end so it doesn't fly across the room because I'm starting to run out of wire on my desk. And there we go. And number five, work it on down. working it on down, run it through your trunk, and I know it looks a hot mess right now, but trust me, it's going to look cute. It's going to look cute. There we go. Stretch out. Give it a cut. Holding on to the wire because we still need a piece for the center beam. 
Okay, so we can leave our tree looking like this. Yeah, it's kind of okay. Not my favorite way to leave it because most branches don't go straight up. So let's just straighten up our toilet paper tube a little bit. Let's kind of hide that some. And what I want you to do is to set it flat on your table. And now all your tree part's gonna be toughy up, toughy up. I want you to take one of those branches and the upper portion, like where it gathers at that triangle part, we're going to take and we're going to bend it just outward slightly. And you're going to do that on each one of these. That's number two. This is number three. This is number four. And this is number five. And here it has opened up our tree some. And with fiddling, you guys just are going to have to fiddle with it and play with it to get it to look the way that you want. You might need to bend some back up. And then we still have our big five cluster toughy that we need to add. And once again, we're going to run our piece of wire through our little curly part. Just keep running that down and run that through the thicker stem portion. Keep running that down. Pull this up some, stretch it out. Give it a good stretch. And for this particular one, you want a little bit more wire to show on the opposite end because we're going to be just simply taking this and placing it inside the paper towel tube. And that is what's going to cause our tree to look big and puffy. And you need to adjust your height. So I don't want to cut it until after I've gotten it in there to see what height I need it. And that looks about good to me. So I'm just gonna cut my wire off the tip. That didn't make it across the room. I'm gonna straighten up my trunk a little bit here. And I'm just gonna take and slide this inside my tube. And then there's an extra band down here, your slip knotted band at the end. You can just use that and tie it off anywhere in the trunk. Just kinda of weave that through any area of the trunk and tie it off. And here we have got, with some more fiddling, of course you gotta fiddle with it a little bit and get it to look the way that you want it to look. If your center beam is too tall, don't want it that tall looking, cut it, make it shorter. If you want a little bit not so puffy pointy top, bend your wire. Don't forget to hide your little, little dangle pieces here, your little tying off stems, hide those. And I am going to spiffen mine up a little bit off of camera. And you'll be able to see the finished product and enjoy your tree. Thanks for visiting.